Good evening, and welcome again to the Unarius Academy of Science. We are now embarked upon, uh, in this session, to uh, plumb the uh, nature of the mind. And uh, I've uh, chalked on the board this title here, How Does the Mind Think? How does the mind think? Well, we all have a mind. That's, that's taken almost for granted. But we haven't yet really determined what the mind is. In fact, the mind is not the brain. So we'll say what the mind isn't. The brain is, a, is a, an organism that you can touch. You can dissect it. Uh, it has a grayish, puttyish feeling. But it is one of the most incomprehensible instruments that has ever commanded uh, respects, respect amongst uh, bi uh, biologists, uh, chemists, uh, neurobi neurobiologists, and psychiatrists, and so on. The reason is that research is still taking place attempting to find out how man thinks and uh, where the instrument of thought actually comes from. But what are thoughts? This is where we come, uh, and we separate uh, certain uh, concepts that have been previously established. There has been a basic statement, of course, that is uh, a common uh, uh, factor in, in all of the teachings of metaphysics and parapsychology. The Unarius science of life uh, starts from there, actually, and goes on. And that is that and we'll see, we will not go into all of this, but we'll say this, uh, three, two, one the body is number number 3 the mind is number 2 and spirit is number 1 this is the body now, of course we go back here we see the seen and the unseen The seen body is the is uh, atomic. It is considered to be um, uh, of the third dimension. and possesses all factors that make it visible light. of atomic properties. The unseen, in contrast, is non-atomic. It is fourth dimensional. It is light of astral energy. Let's go back to the um, title of this uh, lecture, How Does the Mind Think? Well, we can't answer that question until we find out what the mind is. So let us touch upon the mind. Since the mind is unseen because it is not the stuff of the atomic force field, that is the nature of our physical body, that means the cell structures of our physical body as they demonstrate the skin, bone structure, and the internal cardiovascular system, so on. The mind 
is non-atomic, whatever that means, it means that it is not uh, structured uh, from uh, the energy that we see as a part of uh, ourselves and this room and the world as a whole. What is this non-atomic substance? Well, the closest to really being able to grasp the reality of this non-atomic or unseen force is your thoughts. So the thought processes is the uh, actuality of the mind, which is an energy system of such infinite dimensions that it, it can only be guessed at uh, to the degree that, not guessed at, determined to the degree that we are inquiring into it. But the body of knowledge that has been uh, accumulated from higher intelligent beings who live in a complete and total joining of their selves, body, mind, and spirit. There's no separation. The separation that is lived with by most people uh, on Earth, Earth planes, is developed because of certain circumstances that has put a wedge, a wall between the physical body and the mental body and the spiritual body. And uh, when any inquiries would be made, instead of logic and reason and finding the common denominator that really explains uh, the reality of the physical body in the same way it explains the reality of the mental body and the spirit body, uh, it has separated these uh, body structures into some supernatural uh, aspect. But when one starts to probe into the mind, one is now working on a higher level of intelligence, and that expands one's sight. And one sees so many wondrous things uh, that one is want to uh, understand. Well, understanding comes with appreciation first. One has to be appreciative. That means you must be open. And the answers to the hows and whys comes later on in anyone's life. 